Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building spring-based applications on AWS serverless technologies. In the last video, we looked at how quickly you can deploy an existing Spring application to AWS Lambda. In fact, we did it in less than 10 minutes. But there was a couple of bits in that video that I kind of glossed over. So the Spring API itself was connecting to a Postgres SQL database running on RDS. Now, how can we actually configure that database connection in a secure and reliable way? And that's what we're going to look at in this video today, how to manage your application configuration when you're running an application on AWS serverless technologies. Let's get into it and let's start with the database connection. So AWS has a couple of services that allow us to store things like configuration and secrets. So let's actually start in the AWS console itself. So first I'm going to go and have a look at AWS Secrets Manager. So AWS Secrets Manager allows you to encrypt and securely store any secrets, things like database credentials. One of the other really cool features of Secrets Manager is that it supports automatic rotation. So you can automatically rotate your database credentials on a schedule. Now, of course, I'm not going to show you the actual secrets themselves, but you can see here I've got a secret called Product DB Creds. Within there, there is a JSON um, JSON value, JSON object that stores the various different credentials. So let's go and have a look at that, how we can access that in our um, Spring application. So, so if I now open up this JPA configuration file, this is where all of that database credentials and connection configuration is happening. And the first thing we do within this JPA configuration is actually go off and get that secret from Secrets Manager. Um, you see, the first thing we're doing here is, is, is setting the secret name. This could also come from an environment variable, maybe stored against our Lambda function. And then we're constructing a Secrets Manager client, an SDK client that allows us then to make them calls against the AWS APIs. To add this Secrets Manager client, I had to add a couple of dependencies to my dependency file. You see the important one there being the software that Amazon, the AWS SDK, Secrets Manager dependency. And when I construct my Secrets Manager client, I both need to pass in some credentials and also the region to use. And when I create my credentials, I'm just using this environment variable credentials provider. And what that does is, is just pulls the credentials from environment variables, as you can probably guess. This is really powerful though, because it allows this same application code to run both on my machine and in AWS Lambda providing I've got the credentials set correctly in environment variables on my laptop, that will then allow that same code to run in both places. So it's really powerful because it means you can use that same code both when debugging and in production. And then of course we're setting the region. Um, at the minute I'm hard coding the region to US East 1. If you were doing this in a more production ready way, you probably would make that more configurable. Then I go off and create the request to actually make to Secrets Manager. In this case, it's a, it's a get secret value request that we need. And I pass in the name of that secret that we configured at the start of the method. And finally, I go off and make that call to the Secrets Manager client and I call the get secret value endpoint, passing in my request. Now the result that comes back from the get secret value request, provided it's successful, of course, contains this secret string property. And that secret string is just the, the string representation of the JSON object that's stored in Secrets Manager. So we've just got a JSON string now. And what we can do with that JSON string is then deserialize that into a object that we can actually use in our code. So if we go and have a look at the AWS secret class now that we're using, it contains all of the properties you'd probably expect to see when it comes to configuring a database. Username, password, the type of database, the port, the host, all of that standard stuff that you need to be able to create a successful database connection. If we then look at once that's returned and we've got this AWS secret object, we then go off and configure our data source. And we use that using this data source builder object. 
And as part of the, the creation here, we're passing in the URL to use and we're constructing that on the fly. We're con constructing that JDBC connection string using the values we've just received from Secrets Manager. And then of course, we're passing in the username and password to use again, that have just been loaded at runtime from Secrets Manager. Now the benefit of this is that now there's no credential management within our application itself. Everything is coming from this external source that is encrypted and secure, and we can only give people access to that secret if they absolutely need it. For this to run in Lambda is the actual permissions for our Lambda function. So I've just opened up my um, template. If, you're, if you've not seen these templates before, go back and have a look at my last video and we talk through some of the details in this template. Um, and one of the really cool features of AWS SAM is this policy section. So SAM comes built in with some predefined templates that you can use to configure common um, IAM policies that your function might need. Things like you know, DynamoDB, Read and Write, SQS, SNS. And in this case, we're using the Secrets Manager Get Secret Value policy. And all I need to pass in is the ARN for my actual secret. And at the point where I um, build, this SAM, uh, build this SAM application, SAM will then actually generate all of the IAM policies and IAM actions that are required for this to work. If I just flip back to my browser for a second, if we go and have a look at this policy template list, all of the available policies are actually on the AWS documentation side. So you can see here, I've got pre-built policies for DynamoDB, for SQS, for recognition. And this means that when you're building applications with SAM, you don't need to remember the exact IAM actions you need to perform a given task. So that is how we can load application secrets. So now let's just quickly have a look if we want to just load some general application configuration. So not necessarily secrets, but maybe just some configuration values, maybe feature flags or things like that. So there's another AWS service that we're gonna go and have a look at called AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store. And Parameter Store allows you to store parameters, obviously. Um, and I've got a sample property here. Um, a common naming convention for the properties in uh, parameter store is to use this kind of slash based um, structure to give some kind of order to your parameters. You see here, I'm just storing a plain text value. This isn't actually a secret. I don't need to keep this protected. I've just got an application property of hello world. When you actually create parameter property, um, parameters in parameter store, there is actually an option to create an encrypted string. So we have this secure string option, and that's where I can then store an encrypted secret value if I need to. Now you might be wondering when I would use Secrets Manager and when I would use Parameter Store. One of the big benefits of Secrets Manager is that automatic rotation of credentials and also how it integrates with other services like RDS Proxy, which we will get to in the next video. So let's have a look how we could use Parameter Store in our application. So again, if I go back into my, my into, um, IntelliJ, and I've got this application configuration class as well now, and this is where I'm actually gonna configure my application config. So you see, um, much like the um, configuration of our data source, um, when I get the application properties, I'm gonna run this get props method and actually go off and create a connection to the, the simple systems manager client. Again, that is just another dependency I need to add in my dependencies, this time to the SSM SDK. And then I'm going off and making the request and it's almost identical code here. We're just taking that parameter value that we get from parameter store and then just DC realizing that into this application properties class. And if I just have a look at this application properties class, all we have is that single property of my application property, of course. When it comes to actually using this configuration in our application code, I've just got a really simple, now I don't recommend doing this in production and having an endpoint on your API that will expose all of your application configuration. But for the purposes of us demonstrating and testing this, 
having this controller endpoint where I can just see my properties kind of makes things a little bit easier. So I've got this properties controller that has a single endpoint of properties and all I'm doing at the point when this is invoked is just retrieving all of my application properties and returning them as a, um, as a list of strings. When I call this get application properties method, um, you'll notice that up at the top here is that I'm just doing a check to see if my properties have already been retrieved. And this just means that every time um, a new part of my code needs to go and get the application configuration, it's not gonna to need to make that query to systems manager every single time. We're just storing some of this in memory. So one additional thing I do need to add now is the actual permissions for my Lambda function to be able to get that value from parameter store. So if I go off to my template list now and I go in here and I search for a parameter, I can see there is a pre-built template in SAM for an SSM parameter read policy. And you see this, this is the statement that will get generated behind the scenes, but I don't need to remember that. I don't need to know that describe and get and get by path are all the things I need. All I need to know is that this is, I configure this SSM parameter read policy. And part of that policy, I need to pass in a parameter name for the actual parameter that I want to give the permissions to. So if I go back to my SAM template now, I can add an additional policy here. That's the name of the policy and then parameter name. And then I can go off to parameter store and actually grab a copy of my parameter. One really important thing to remember is that you do not need the leading slash on the parameter name. If we go back and look at the template, you see that the slash is already there. So you don't actually need that leading slash when you configure your SAM template. So we come back to here and that is all we need now. So when I run a SAM build and a SAM deploy, SAM will then add the, the correct permissions for this Lambda function to be able to access both Secrets Manager and SSM Parameter Store. I'm just gonna pause the video now while I build and deploy this application and then we'll come back and see it in action. Okay, so that has finished deploying now. So if I just flick over to Postman um, and we can see if I make a call to my product endpoint, the product endpoint is still working just as it was. And then if I then go and make a call to that properties endpoint that I have just configured, you see I get my hello world response. Now, this is really, really cool when you consider the whole 12 factor app way of building applications because we've decoupled our configuration of our application from the application itself. So if I wanted to go and change this property name, for example, I can just come into the console. You'd probably wanna do this with some kind of CI, CD, DevOps, source control based approach. But for this approach, let's just say hello Java from .NET, because .java and .NET are of course best friends. Now, if I run this a few times, we might not instantly see this update because of the way the Lambda execution environments work. As long as this request is being serviced by the same execution environment, we will get that same property value. So this may take a few minutes to actually update. We may be able to force a cold start in which case we'll get a new value. See, we're sticking with hello world. If I go to my Lambda function now and switch some of the configuration around, so let's say I change that to have 512 megabytes of memory, for example, this will then force a cold start upon my Lambda function. And if I make that call again, now you can see I'm getting a cold start because it's taking a little bit longer to run. And then when this request does eventually return, I will get the new version of my parameter value. And that has returned now. And of course, we've got our hello Java from .NET. And we've got our new value. Now in a later video, we'll look at a way where you can make this configuration change a bit more easily than needing to change some configuration on your Lambda function. But that is coming later. That's all I've got for this video. We've looked at how you can configure both your database connections using Secrets Manager and any application configuration using Parameter Store. In the next video, we're gonna look at some of the challenges that you get when you connect Lambda to an existing relational database like Postgres and some of the things we can do to help ease the connections and the load on our Postgres database. I will see you then.